<laughs> in this video I'm just going to quickly run through what I've taken with me for a multi-day winter backpacking expedition and I say expedition very loosely all right because yes I was wild camping but also I was uh, st staying in pubs so I know that a few people will be asking me what I took with me on on the hike because it was winter it, it throws its own sort of complications into the mix and different decisions have to be made whether you go you know to keep yourself warm and to keep yourself dry and things so what did I wear so I've got back I'm back I'm not gonna get too much into it but I've had to jump off the trail halfway around to do a few things and then I'm gonna be jumping back on it but for now what did I wear forget what I'm actually wearing today because I'm not on the trail but the shoes of choice were Lone Peak Ultra 7s, garish in colour, I know. I did have a Montane gaiter that I used, it was a trail running gaiter, but which had a um, like a bungee cord that went under the shoe, which kept running out. I, used, I went through a couple on each long distance hike, so I've swapped it out for this Lone Peak's own, which has a little clip on there, and then the Velcro attaches into the back of the shoe which has this inbuilt velcro bit into it look into the back of the shoe there you just lift down pull down that flap and the velcro goes in there like that under these i wore a pair of darn tough socks which i've had for a long time and i took two pairs of darn tough socks which i rotated it was these or me lowers <laughs> and i'd even weatherproofed my me lowers and I was going to take them right up until the day that I set off and then I was like, no, we're going for that. But I'll get into that in another video, the pros and cons of hiking boots over trail runners in winter. It's a hot topic, guys, one that I'm sure you don't want to miss out on. Phil Raven hiking trousers with the the vents. I found these really handy, the vents. To, I always often open, I know it's winter, but often opening these up to get some extra... Uh, to get some extra airflow to me and there's one of them on each side. I didn't take this coat with me, this is just what I'm wearing today because it's nippy. It wicks sweat, it's just a, an old uh, an old t-shirt I got free for doing a, a marathon or something. Uh, this North Ridge Merino wool thin base layer and that's what I hiked in with, and I did have my, oh there they are, darn tough socks. Pointless really. I put this back on that it's freezing this isn't good is it it's not very professional but that's it i was also wearing this i had this with me it's just a merino wool buff that i've split in half so it's not as big but that went round my neck i had my fjell raven uh, cap on so i could put this over my ears and the fjell raven cap just keeps the rain out of my eyes and the the sun and whatever and then for when i got cold it's like a micro light Patagonia coat which is it's super light and it packs down to hardly nothing so that came with me and also on the outside a chest pouch I took I don't favour it in summer because it was just giving me a massive sweat on on there and I didn't need as much stuff but I thought it's winter I need a lot of things to hand and in here my Garmin Inreach Mini very rare that you're going to need it but it's just in case if I fall over and sprain my knob or whatever, I can just press a button and they'll come get me. And I can let people know where I am, do emergency uh, weather forecasts and whatnot. It's, uh, it's pretty good. I got a waterproof phone holder in there as well. Because I was using OS maps on my phone, if it rains or if it's torrential rain for any long periods of time, that goes around my neck phones in there and I can still use it. Also in there was my Petzl Bindi head torch. I keep a sandwich bag and if it starts to muller it down then the torch and my phone and whatever can go in there and that just keeps everything completely dry. I also had my Cicero guidebook in there as well. I took my hiking stick because I was using a, a hiking pole tent as well but I always take these on long distance solo hikes because they really do come in handy. And these are just my black diamond cork handle hiking sticks. On the outside of the bag, 
asked me water bottles, just two plaggy water bottles. I would put electrolytes in this one. This one I just keep as water just to hydrate with and also just mainly to cook with. This was always going to be electrolytes, so we don't use that one for cooking. And just any old plastic bottle I use. Also on the outside, my lightweight foam pad. A myriad of different uses just like sitting on, putting under your sleep mat for extra protection from the cold and also from thorns and sharp stones. Weighs nothing, it's always going to be coming with me that. Also on the outside of the pack, waterproofs, which I did need because obviously it's winter. It's a collaboration between Ron Hill and Mountain Equipment. Super lightweight, it's a trail running uh, coat, no frills, no pockets just keeps the rain off me. Also on the outside, woolly hat, just to keep lugs warm and mainly to sleep in as well. My waterproof trousers, I didn't use these in the end. Oh, well I haven't used them so far, I'm only halfway through. Berghaus Deluge waterproof trousers, right into the brains of the operation. The top of the bag, the brain. I lost me uh, Osprey bag cover, I don't know where that is, so I'm just using this old uh, DD rain cover does the trick anti body glide it's for runners I was doing it when I was doing a lot of running and it's just an anti chafe glide and it's it really does help just popping a bit of this on your inner thigh or on your nuts or whatever or under your armpits wherever you get a bit of chafing and it it really does the trick I recommend that these high five zero sugar electrolytes Put one of these in your water, it replaces all your salts and things that you might lose while you're doing long distances. And that's it, that's what I kept in the top of there. On the inside of the top of the uh, thing, we have CBD oil, which I use at the end of every day. Just helps me sleep and it's good for joints and that. And that's Kent CBD. I do have a discount code and I'll leave a link below for that if you're interested. Jelly earplugs. Right, let's get into main, the main bulk of it, the main bag. And it's all just been stuffed in here, don't worry about that. Clothes, kept in a dry bag. Obviously, everything in here is in a dry bag, uh, individually in dry bags. And then I've put a builder's sack, like, which is waterproof, just as an extra layer, because in winter you can't, it's one thing getting everything wet, but you can't really dry things out. And in here we've got my Nature Hike down trousers, adding an extra layer of warmth for the evenings because, again, it's winter. A secondary pair of darn tough socks. Aclima merino wool leggings, again, just for an, on a night time, really. My lightweight Aclima merino wool base layer. My trunks, because you never know, even in winter, I might want a little dipperoo. My secondary pair of pants, so these, I need some new ones, these, they've got holes in, man. Icebreaker, I took them and a Patagonia pair. These are brilliant, these are probably one of the best hiking pants I've ever had. They're, they, I need some new ones of them, they're falling to pieces. And that was it for clothes, I just kept everything pretty lightweight, and uh, obviously layering is the key. Also in the top, four, are these delta pegs for the outside of the tent the rest will be normal pegs but in winter up high it's just peace of mind because a lot of the time when there's heavy winds that's where your tent will fail is where is at the is at the pegs it'll just rip the pegs out but good luck ripping them out because they're sturdy electrics bag again in a waterproof bag we've got my pump which is, it doubles up as a lantern for at night and it also blows up my airbed. It's a little bit of extra weight, you don't really need it, but it is luxurious. After a full day hiking, you're not, it's just demoralizing having to blow airbed up manually. So I'll take that with me every time and it, it really does hold its charge well as well. Power banks, because you don't want to not have a phone. So I've got these two power banks, both by Anchor, Possible's bag, Sinop, Oh, whatever you, however you want to put Canock, Sinock, um, water bladder to, to collect the water, and then my Soya Micro Squeeze, which you attach to the bottom, and that's just for procuring water and filtering it. Some biodegradable wipes, some hand, these are great, man. These are foot, you get foot and hand warmers. They last all night. You chuck them in your sleeping bag, 
pop them on your digits or in your on your in your socks while you're hiking. Great stuff. My bread bags. <laughs> For anyone who doesn't know about the bread bags, is that uh, once I've finished hiking, these are like my camp shoes. I'll put the my dry socks on, the bread bags over the dry socks, and then I can wear my wet shoes just with the laces really loose and walk around and not get my dry socks wet. So top tip. Compede blister pads essential. Just got a bamboo tooth brush and mini toothpaste. My Soto Windmaster and a little first aid kit that I've put together myself. It's just got some antihistamines, some painkillers, a mirror to check with ticks or if you get anything in your eye or whatever. Always handy to have a mirror. Some tweezers, some plasters, a lighter. And then this little tube here that's just got some matches, safety pin, scalpel, bit of fishing twine. Just a silly little safe, like, survival kit thing food real termat muesli viewsli couple more real termats and i took a couple of adventure foods as well enough food so that i didn't have to get anything on the trail obviously when you're on the trail you take advantage of your your pubs and your cafes and your, your shops and your chippies and all that but i like to have enough food so that if none of that's available i can just i can just bat on so i took enough food for the adventure there i had to buy this because i forgot mine Let's buy it on route and it's the uh, Alp kit and in there's the gas canister and then a little pot uh, gas stabiliser and that all goes in there and that's what I would boil my water in with my Soto Windmaster and that's it. Not doing any cooking on this one obviously just uh, boiling hot water. The trusted and well loved, oh, it's still a bit wet and he's drying out man, Lanshan 2 Neo Air Extra Large Extherm. I've had this for years. I've patched it up maybe two or three times. It's got little holes in, but I've patched them up. It still works a treat, keeps me warm. Sleeping bag is, well, this was the big one. I was like, shall I bring, do you bring me a winter sleeping bag, which is maybe an extra 500 gram, or do you go for your free season and then make it up with coats and stuff? But I'm really glad that I took this, and this is Rab Ascent 900. A wonderful, wonderful sleeping bag. And my pillow, because my me, uh, me other one's got an hole in it, is just this Queecha pillow. Falls down to less than this, but I just chucked it in the bottom and then it's got a real nice feel to it. Nice and comfortable. You could take some snow spikes with you if you knew you were going to get snow. I was doubtful, so I risked it and didn't take them. But that's something that you could consider. And obviously, everyone packs differently for for their style of camping and hiking, but this is what I took. Right, there you go, that's everything I took. I'll put the weight on the screen now. I'll leave links to everything below here. My next video will be of the hike, and this sort of helps you know what I've got with me, what's in my bag, how much it weighed. Right, thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves. <sighs> Bye for now. Just gonna leave everything there, stack it.